All right, so now let's head straight at that last test case that we have to complete MP1. And as part of this, I also want to discuss a little bit about what's called test-driven development, or this workflow that you can get into. A workflow is a pattern, of, a pattern or a series of steps that you use when developing software. It's almost an algorithm that you use to write code. And a good workflow will really allow you to work efficiently and effectively when you make changes and when you create things. A bad workflow will be frustrating and cause things to take forever. Um, so the workflow that we're going to uh, get into or that I would strongly suggest you adopt, some of you have discovered this already on your own, which is pretty cool. Um, but for those of you that haven't, let me kind of walk you through the steps. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to zero in on one test. We're going to run the test case. We're going to figure out what failed. And then we're going to try to understand what changes we need to make to our code to address that problem. Okay. So when I'm sitting down with a project for the first time in a while, sometimes I will run the entire test suite, right? It's a good sanity check just to make sure that everything that is working is everything you think is working is actually working. Okay. So I'm tracking along with you. So at this point, I think that I've finished three out of the four MP1 test cases. My search method works properly. I've uh, done the comparator that I needed to sort the restaurant list. I've updated the UI so that the cuisines are displayed, which is the thing that we did uh, yesterday. And now I'm working on this last thing, which is getting the uh, UI search method to work properly. Um, now, one thing to notice is over here, if, if there's this checkbox, um, and I would suggest that you turn this on, which will show you passing tests, because that's good to see kind of what works and what doesn't, okay? So what I see here is that it ran five tests one of them was ignored. It didn't run, and that's because it has that ignore annotation. This was that helper test. It's ungraded. There are three tests that passed. These were the first three parts of the MP, and I've got this one test that failed here. So that's what I expect, okay? Now, as I go forward, all I want to do is run the failing test. I don't care about the test that succeeded. When you get done, now we won't get done together because I'm not going to do the whole, uh, the whole bit for you. Uh, but when you get done, I strongly suggest that you go back and rerun the entire test suite again. So again, this is my workflow when running, working on bigger problems. When I sit down with our playground backend or other pieces of software that I maintain for the course, frequently the first thing I do is run the whole test suite. So as it takes a minute, I go get a cup of coffee, come back, make sure everything's passing. That's what I expect to find. Then I figure out what bug am I working on. I write a test case for it and narrow it down and get it to fail. And then I work on the code until that test case passes. And then I run the whole suite again to make sure I didn't break anything. Now, in this case, we've done part of the hard work for you, which is we wrote the test suites. In real life, frequently you're both writing the test suites and writing the code. And that is how real software creators work. That's what I did for MP0. That's why there are tests there that are ungraded because I wrote those tests as I was developing the code uh, because this is the workflow that I actually follow. So this is not just some weird thing that we tell you to do in class. This is something that real programmers and software creators do um, as, as they go about their, their, their process. All right, so now I'm only gonna run this failing test. So I'm gonna click over here. This is the way I do it. There's other ways to just run this one test, but uh, you can hit this little uh, green play button next to the test. And this is the last test in the suite. I don't promise that we're always gonna go in order, but in this particular checkpoint, we are going in order top to bottom. This is the test that I don't expect to work. All right, so this is gonna run, it's gonna fail. When it fails, the next thing I need to do is figure out why, what happened or didn't happen that was supposed to. And if I go through the error output here, there's a lot of logging information, and you may look at this and wonder what's going on. The most important piece of information here is a line number in the test suite, because that'll tell me what the test suite was trying to do when it failed. And so, you know, there's lots of different blah, blah, blah. I mean, you know, you know, looking, being able to look through this stuff effectively is honestly something that becomes pretty important as you, as you uh, work with more complex systems. But I see right here, there's a line number in mp one test mp one testjob I'm going to click on that. And that's going to take me exactly to where I want to go. So what did it do? And what did it expect? So you'll notice that what happened is, uh, the test suite, and I put in comments here, if you were writing the test suite, you'd have a pretty good idea of what it was doing. Because you didn't write the test suite, I've tried to put in lots of comments so you understand what it's doing. So in this case, what we did is we, we essentially typed Ethiopian into the search bar in your app. There are unfortunately no Ethiopian restaurants in this area, at least not in the list that I have. 
Um, and so what I expected to happen is I expected the list to show no items. And that's what's being checked down here. So it essentially says that after I enter that search term, the list should be blank. And if I ran the app and type it in Ethiopian, I would see that nothing would change. And the reason is I haven't done any work in this method that I need to handle, right? And so this is a starting point, a jumping off point for writing the code that I need to write in order to get this to work. And so what I would do is I would essentially go back to the main activity. I would figure out, okay, where do I need to put my code? And I would start writing it. And as I go, I run the test suite. If it fails, figure out what line number failed, understand what the test was doing. Why didn't my code work properly? Go back to my code, make a change, run the test again. And you repeat this process. The more often, the less code you write between running tests, like sometimes you have to finish something so it compiles, right? Or it does something, that's okay. But you know, you really wanna work as incrementally as possible. Don't try to write like the whole MP and then run the test suite. That does not work. Um, run the test suites early, often, and as frequently as possible, essentially. Like you really wanna be running the test uh, whenever you think that you might, something might work or that you might have fixed something, right? Like maybe you made it a little bit better. Maybe you know it's still not totally right, but you expect it to get a little bit farther in the test suite before failing. So let's go back and, and let's talk a little bit about what's going on in here. So this is a case where we're using a library to render the list of courses. And your biggest, so there's a couple of uh, things here that you wanna notice. The first is, how does the initial list get populated? And you'll notice that there's this line of code right here, and yours might look a little different, where when we were, after we retrieve the list of restaurants from the server, we use it to populate the list that's shown in the view. And the way we do that is there's this list adapter variable. This is a, a variable that's set on your class, and so you can use it from these other callback methods. And let's just try messing around with it because that actually will help us figure out what's going on. So, you know, one of the things I'll do in Android Studio is I'll just start typing and then I'll hit uh, dot and I kind of see like what, what comes up here. And you also look at what's here. So what this, so there's actually, uh, this, this library requires that in order to modify the contents, we first call this edit method. And then you'll see when we're done, we need to call commit. Now in between, I'm gonna leave that up to you, right? To kind of like look at the code that's here, try to understand what's going on and figure out what to do in here. Keep in mind too, you have the search method that you wrote as part of an earlier uh, test case, right? We expect you to use that here, right? You wrote a search method. The search method needs two things. It needs a list of restaurants and it needs a query and you have both of those pieces of information here. You have that list of restaurants uh, that is uh, stored, oh geez, I hope it's stored. Uh, well, maybe it's not even stored. Maybe we need to do that first actually, right? Uh, maybe we need to add the list of restaurants so we have access uh, to it here, which is possible, right? Um, but you know, you need to figure out how to uh, gain access to the full list of restaurants, pass that to your, uh, to your search method, um, figure out what are the matches based on the query that's passed to the text, passed from the search box into this callback method, and then edit the list appropriately, right? So this is really not very many lines of code, right? But there are some other small changes that you'll need to make potentially to the main activity to get this to work. So anyway, good luck. Uh, as always, if you need help, jump on the help site. Uh, if you start writing a lot of code in this method, uh, slow down, stop, get some help because you really shouldn't need to. There are some small changes you need to make. You might have to make changes to on create. You might have to add some instance variables up here to the class. Um, you know, this is your code at this point. We do expect you to make changes as needed. But as you go, you know, work in, in that test driven way. So when you feel like you have something that might work, run the test suites. If it works, you're done, right? Then run the entire test suite to make sure you got full credit commit and push and you're off to MP2. Um, if it doesn't work, figure out what line it failed on, read the comments around that portion to figure out what the test was doing, what it expected to happen, and then think about why your code isn't meeting those expectations. If you follow that workflow, that'll take you through this, check, this particular test case, through all of MP2, all of MP3, and through the rest of your life as a software creator in a very productive, uh, happy uh, manner.